bring those maze uniforms out. You're doing something special, right? Yeah. This is what we've been feeling now. Mm -hmm. Right? This right here. This guy's back. This guy is back. And he's got to be back in this game. We play one game with these guys. Just one game. Mm -hmm. One game. You gotta look at that that way, like a championship game. You have one time to play these guys this year on our court right now, right? And that's why we're gonna win, right? Because we have no other freaking option. Right. Just go and win. We win because we're fighters and we believe in defense. We're gonna relentless tonight. You win when you play for the people in the room, not for yourself, not even for Michigan. You play for the freaking guys in this room. The last thing is we protect this house right here. Right. Nobody outplays us. Never. We're the first ones to hit the floor. We got it. We got a great responsibility right now to win a championship, win at home. Got to win on the road too. Got to win at home. Right. And we are passionate about doing this with the guys in this room and for our university and all those fans that came out in zero degree weather. Right. We're doing this for them too. Right. So this isn't one of those games. We're just going out. We're out thinking. Of it. It's out willing them. Out passionate, out, out loving each other, right? Making sure that we're doing this thing for, for the right reason. Right. We got this in us. Let's go. Let's go. Michigan goes into Bloomington, a really tough place to win. Wins by 23. Now, they hope to keep it rolling against another rival. Ohio State is here. Rips a pass inside, right mid post for Caleb Wesson. Lowers the right shoulder, turns, and left hand hooks it home off the small square. It's right back to a six-point bump for Ohio State. Poole to Simpson. They work it around the perimeter. Livers for three. Book it! Tied at 19, Isaiah Livers deep inside for Wesson. Drop step, leans, blocked by Teske. Ball popped in the air, grabbed by Wesson. Left-handed, strong, put back, no good. Rebounded by Livers. Very, very physical ball game, and I, and I love it. I mean, there's I've been a whole lot of fouls called. The officials are letting them play, and Michigan is playing through it. Jordan Poole, deep three on the way. Give me that. Oh, ho, ho. Jordan Poole is starting to heat up. 22-19, a pitch to Simpson. Drives middle of the lane and a kick out. Matthews wants the three, got it. Michigan's back in front, Charles Matthews. 25-24 U of M. To Simpson left to right. Punches over, now drives. Scoops off the small square and through. Andre Wesson left wing, throws up an air ball from three. 145 left to go. Michigan in front by one. They've got it. Brazdeka stop and pop, triple try, yes. Money sign into Chrysler Center. Top side feed for Caleb Wesson to Washington. Wayne Washington, a right-handed push shot, right baseline, no good. Backside rebound, Simpson floats it up ahead for Poole. Nice over the shoulder, catch an LA in. Great look by Xavier Simpson. Michigan leads at 36-29. Delivers left corner, three splash. What a great sign for Michigan, huh? A couple of threes on the night, and Michigan's lead is eight. Simpson on a drive. Sneaks around, reverse layup, good. Boy, that was sneaky, wasn't it? 6.6 .6 boards, eight assists. You like that line? Back to Poole. Jumps into a three. Get in there. Got it! Uh, he asked him to get up for good reason. We give it to him on both ends. So. Razdakis for three. Off the heel. Boarded by Keyshawn Woods. They floated up ahead. Caleb Wesson beat everybody. Back blocked by mm. Simpson! Oh, ho, ho. He blocked the six foot nine center! Punches over. On the left wing, ball fakes left, strokes a three, nails the three. Xavier Simpson's got nine points. And this has not ha have been a, a pretty game whatsoever, no. but they just showed that they can win in many ways, and you just see that grit and that determination. Hooks a pass inside, Matthews laid it off the window, and it dropped through. 11th assist of the night for Xavier Simpson. A one-on-one, -on -one. nice crossover. Hook shot on the way, off the glass and good. A double-double for Xavier Simpson. On a drive, and a floater is off. Rebounded, collected. Simpson's got the triple-double. And they knock off the Buckeyes, 65-49. I just try to play hard. One, that's one thing I try to do. That's something my um, mom and dad has told me since I'm young. Hey, whatever I do, just go hard, play as hard as I can. And I, when I got to college, Coach B informed me that I also need to play hard, which is one important thing, but also play smart. So I just try to do both of those things. Definitely play smarter than hard, and I um, just try to keep my team um, happy. How sweet is it to do it against Ohio State? It's, it's definitely sweet. I grew up watching that um, team since I was little, since I was UEA, so it's definitely um, a blessing. Um, hopefully, we can continue to have success like this. We also have another accomplishment today. 
He just tied Johnny Orr for the most wins in Big Ten history by a Michigan coach mm. with 120. Yeah. Yeah. I coached her long enough, he didn't fire me. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, so anyways, congratulations. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Last 42 halves of basketball, your team has held the opponent to 30 points or fewer in 27 of the halves. What does that tell you about your team? That I think that we, uh, we embrace defense. I think we really like it. I think we realize that it's the best way for us to play. As we continue to grow our offensive game, it is the best way for us to play. And, and you, you, first of all, you have to have some skill level. You have to have some emphasis on it. Luke Yockledge and tonight, Saudi Washington with the Sky Report do a tremendous job of preparation. Uh, but our guys buy into it 100%. There's been six triple doubles in the history of Michigan basketball. Five of the men who have boasted such a statistic have played for you. How do you feel about that? I feel great about it. I didn't know the stat until you told me, but now I, I can remember those different situations. And, and Manny, right? Yep. And uh, Darius Morris. Right. Karis right? Levert. Karis Levert. Derek Walton. Derek Walton had one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, then, and now tonight, Xavier. Right. Uh, and so I'm surprised Trey Burke didn't have one. So that just tells you mm -hmm. how, right, hard, how, hard I, how hard it is to be able to do. And Gary Grant was the, the, was the other one. Right. So it's real, just really hard to do. You know, I don't get a lot into those things. I think what most amazing about that was 12 assists, zero turnovers. Right. Right against a team that was averaging eight steals a game, was turning people over at 13, uh, the ball's in his hands, and he's, he just does a great job of just running our team. Coach, it's January 29th, and your team has 20 wins. Do you even marvel at that? Um, I remember last time that we started like this, somebody said, hey, it's 20 wins, and I said, well, it's, it's good. We've done that before. And they said, it's January. And then, then it's, we sort of have, but we got a long way to go. Now with the 10-game schedule, we're halfway through the Big Ten. I mean, that's it. We're halfway. we got a long way to go. We have a lot of road games, and uh, it is what it is, though. We'll take the, the, this 20-1 this and one start, and now in these next, 11, in these next 10 games, we got to play like we did tonight. We got to find a way that it's play every game like it's Ohio State. The crowd was electric tonight. They came through zero degree temperature. The crowd was electric. The just the atmosphere was tremendous. Yeah. Motown night, yeah. great halftime show. I missed. Yeah, right. Kathleen, <laughs> Kathleen videoed it for me, so I'm gonna be able to watch it. Love yeah. Motown. So great win for it. Up next for John Beeline of the Wolverines, a tough trip to Carver Hawkeye Arena. Never easy against the Hawkeyes, a team that is big. Buick GMC. Visit your Metro Detroit Buick GMC dealer for exceptional offers all month long. After one of the best defensive performances in Michigan basketball history, the Wolverines now hit the road to take out one of the best offenses in the entire conference, perhaps one of the best offenses in the nation. Brasdakis spot up three from the right wing and he buried it. Ignis Brasdakis has come to play. Michigan leads it 7-5. Simpson hesitates at the top. Twin the legs dribble, takes it deep inside, scoops and scores. How did he find an opening to hit that shot? 11-9 Michigan. Sits at the top of the arc, looks inside, delivers outside. Brasdakis, catch and shoot three, good. Second triple of the night for Ignis Brasdakis. Michigan's in front by five. Simpson in the backcourt against Daly. Try to go bounce pass left side, stolen by Wies Camp. He'll take it in and lay it through. It's the first turnover of the night for Michigan. Top side for Creener. A one-handed pass for Bayer. Dumps it inside Wies Camp. Bouncing on the left. 25-17 Iowa. Bounce pass finds Creener right elbow. Drives on Brasdakis. Forced it up short. Got his own rebound. Put back his good. Gets given a really nice lift off the bench. He's got five. Runs into a ball, hand and robot. Now a crossover, now a drive, now a layup on the right side. Second layup for Xavier Simpson tonight. 40 to 29 Iowa. 
Just keep playing with confidence. I mean, you'll get yourself back into this ball game. You just can't hang your head. Matthews drives middle of the lane. Double clutch. No. Follow-up jam by Teske. First field goal of the night for Michigan Center. It's down to a 13-point Iowa lead. Now Probes pulls it back. Now he'll drive right side. Hook pass inside. Teske finished it over the front of the rim and drew a foul. Yeah, that's those couple positive plays that Michigan was looking for to be able to get two of those plays in a row and get something positive going. Now Simpson's got it to Matthews. Catch and shoot three. Get in there. Got it. Big triple from Charles Matthews. His first field goal of the night. Michigan pulls to within eight. Swings it to Simpson to Matthews. Right side Livers wants the three. Knocks it through. Right side Isaiah Livers. A clutch bucket there to pull Michigan to within seven. Simpson running into the front court to Matthews. Jumps into a three. Give me that. Missed it. Tapped up by Teske off the glass. Yeah, how about Teske? I mean, showing the fight and the grit. The lead is five. Greener, bounce pass Garza. Spins, right-handed hook shot off the window, and it's good. 56-49. Iowa leads. Garza sealed off. Rivers got the pass and jammed it through. 65-51. Michigan down 14 again. Iowa upsets fifth-ranked Michigan. Just the second loss of the season. They were just tough all night. Um, their tempo was really quick. As soon as we missed a shot or turned it over, they were right back at us. So, uh, you know, their tempo was really great and their ball movement as well. Jordan, do you get a sense that you guys had the looks you wanted? They just weren't dropping. It was one of those nights. Uh, I mean, we, we could have got better looks. We didn't get bad looks. I'm sorry, we didn't get great looks, but uh, we definitely got looks that we were capable of making. They weren't falling. Um, we just got to get back in the gym, get back in the lab, practice, and um, it happens. Uh, I'm glad it happened now rather than in March. So um, just learn from it, grow from it, and uh, guys are going to look at the film and get better. Tough one for John Beeline and the Wolverines, but that's a really good Iowa team. Oh, what gave you the biggest trouble, do you think, against that tough offense? I think it re really we did a great job, like on Moss did not score, right? We did a great job on Bohannon. Uh, the, the big issue was we couldn't stop them in the paint, that they're big guys, whether it was Cook or Garza, just really um, – when John Teske's in foul trouble, we got a lot of young guys in there guarding them, and they just they took it right to them. How much did the flow of the early part of the game maybe disrupt your team a little bit with a, a bunch of guys getting some early fouls? Yeah, that was really bad. I just said one of the biggest plays of the game is, as we've warned him about this, John Teske reaching reaching on a pick and roll and getting his first foul. Biggest, one of the biggest plays of the game. Not now anything can happen in the game. So, yeah, it's just uh, that that was, we, was one guy that we needed in that game. And, you know, if it helps us win another game later on, Matt, because that one really just sinks in. We got to be better than that. Coach, you, you guys had some good looks. I mean, so, some open looks. They just weren't, they weren't dropping for you. I mean, did, did you like the looks overall that your team had tonight? I liked about half of them. I, I think attribute their defense and the way that they were playing their defense, um, that they were challenging some people to shoot and, and getting our best shooters and running them off the line. So, no, we didn't have, we didn't have the best, but... You know, that, that, that wasn't a big issue right now. It's just we're going to make some of those shots, and we got to move the ball a little bit better. So, yeah, they're a better team. I mean, I, I said that to, my, uh, to this team, I said, in 13, we came in here with a national championship type of team, and we got blown out of here. In 14, we came in here, a team that was 15-3 in the league, and got blown out of here. So, they, and they, we just got blown out of here today. Coach, you're like a scientist working on different chemistry problems, yeah. trying to figure out the right lineup. What did your young guys learn in a game like this? Well, I think the biggest thing would be, Matt, that they would learn that you better be ready because we might call on you, right? There's guys got to, our regular bench has to go in and do something. And now, you know, Matt, we've had 80 practices. Our freshmen, you know, we expect them to be able to go in and do some of the same stuff, but they're just not, they're, they're going to need more experience. But it's not going to come when the game, we're not going to give them the experience when the game's on the line yet because they haven't shown that. We need them to see that. But we need guys to come off the bench. We needed more off the bench from Brandon, from Eli, from Isaiah Livers today because their bench was tremendous. And our bench is going to improve. Coach, as always, thanks. Thanks. Michigan's leaders and best are brought to you by Gardner White Furniture. Here's Ed Kongerski. As the most experienced member of the assistant coaching staff, Saudi Washington was the man in charge during Michigan's trip to Spain back in August. In Coach Beeline's absence, he told us the mission was to pick up the flag and keep moving. It was a great honor uh, to be in a position to uh, lead the team. And uh, I think our staff uh, did a, a tremendous job of, of supporting and doing what we always do. 
Washington called it a fun experience and credited the players for sticking to the program standards. Personally, it was an immense opportunity to learn and grow. The biggest thing is to trust your instincts. And it's one of those things that until you really kind of sit in that seat and have to make uh, decisions instead of suggestions, um, you know, it's just something that you have to go through. The trip also gave him a chance to live out one of his personal axioms. Every good, si good assistant should, uh, in some regards, think like a head coach. That way you kind of stand in your, your, your boss's blind spots at, at times. Before every game, each coach has a few minutes in front of the team. It can be entertaining for sure, but there also needs to be a purpose. It's one of those things that the message can come to you early in the week, you know, in preparation. Uh, sometimes it doesn't come until you actually walk into the locker room and, and you just kind of do it on the fly. And there's times, and you guys have captured it, like, I just totally forget. You just go blank, and, you, and sometimes you don't have anything. Do you have aspirations to be a head coach one day? I do. You know, I, 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 would, uh, I think most guys in our profession, you know, have that aspiration. You know, I, I've been blessed and, and fortunate to, to come into Michigan at a, at a great time. You know, if the opportunity presents itself and it makes sense, then great. And if not, you know, things are going pretty well here. And uh, we, we can stick around here for a while. That's the smile of a man who loves his job and loves his team. Saudi says he's always trying to evolve as a coach, attempting to add something to his plate each and every season. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Ed Kingerski. Our Al Roll Steel Iron Man of the Week is freshman Ignis Brezdakis. For the week, he averaged 15 points, four and a half rebounds, and shot almost 50% from the floor. Part of that, a 16 and six effort in a blowout win over Ohio State at Chrysler Center. Freshman Ignis Brezdakis, our Al Roll Steel Iron Man of the Week. The women's basketball team hosted Michigan State January 27th. A sold-out crowd watched five Michigan players score in double figures, with freshman Nas Hillman leading the way with 17 points and 10 rebounds. Sophomore Deja Church and freshman Amy Dilk added 13, and senior Hallie Thome tossed in 12 points. After trailing by as many as 15 points in the third quarter, Michigan ended the frame on an 8-0 run. The Wolverines closed within four points on a bucket by Hillman with just under two minutes remaining, but couldn't get any closer. MSU used a balanced scoring attack with four Spartans scoring in double figures, and they returned East Lansing with a 77-73 win. The Wolverines hosted 13th-ranked Iowa Friday. There were four lead changes in the first half, with Michigan leading by as many as 12 points. Deja Church scored 15 of her 19 points in the first 20 minutes, as the home team led by three points at intermission. Michigan extended its lead to 11 points in the third quarter, and they ended up winning 90-81. A Ken Ray Johnson finished with 19 points for Michigan, who out-rebounded the Hawkeyes 44-23. Kayla Robbins scored 13 points for the Wolverines, and Hallie Thome chipped in 12 points. The win was Michigan's third this season over a ranked opponent. It ended the Wolverines' two-game losing streak. Michigan's back on the road Sunday afternoon, traveling to Wisconsin to take on the Badgers, before returning home on Thursday to host Nebraska at 7 o'clock. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Sarah Van Meter. Time for this week's DTE Performance of the Week. Simpson, a jab step to the free throw line. A one-on-one, -on -one. nice crossover. Hook shot on the way, off the glass and good. On a drive, and a floater is off. Rebounded, collected, Simpson's got the triple-double. The first triple-double for a Michigan player since Derek Walton. And we have a bonus DTE Performance this week, T. Turner. for 20 years, celebrated the Motown Sound Tuesday night at Chrysler Center.
so cool. So many people dancing to the Motown sound Tuesday night at Chrysler Center as Michigan danced their way to their 20th win. This week, another stiff challenge at Rutgers. I know a team that doesn't have a lot of wins, but a team that is very good defensively. And then a rematch with Wisconsin. Michigan hoping for a little revenge against Ethan Happ and the Badgers Saturday in Ann Arbor. Hope you can join us for all the highlights, all the sounds, and all the breakdowns with the coach and the players next week on Inside Michigan Basketball. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Buick GMC. Visit your Metro Detroit Buick GMC dealer for exceptional offers all month long.